Welcome to Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. Rex, whiskey, glasses. This is a gift from Magnificent Bastards, Andrew and Victoria Rittenberg. Andrew and Victoria Rittenberg, you Magnificent Bastards. Yeah. It is very much morning whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, <sighs> still easing into the day. Yeah. So, ah! This is the Atlanta Distillery. Yeah. ASW. We love these guys. We've done a lot of their malts. Their bourbons uh, that we've tried before are all MGP sourced, right? Yeah. But this one they call Unison. It's a mix of MGP and their own malt. Okay. So it's the high wheat MGP mm -hmm. mixed with their bourbon, which is a high malt mash bill. I wonder what the proportion is because this is. Uh, kind of a classic MGP type of nose. Maybe they teaspooned their own stuff into it. That'd be very funny. So, <laughs> the reverence is uh, <laughs> teaspooning if you're buying something from a country like Scotland. Yeah. In Scotland. Single malt. Single malt. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> what they do is if you're going to buy a tote, to make it not single malt, they'll just teaspoon in a anything. little like a dollop from a bottle. Just yeah. like, Boop, it's blended scotch now. Yeah. Single now it may go. <laughs> it calls it. <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. Okay. It is very much that sort of uh, cherry cherry and slight sweet grass, like lemongrass. Yeah, the proportion is going to be everything in a project like this, man. Oh, yeah. Because like, it could be 5%, 10%. It could be something really, really small just because you have a very low volume of your own stuff uh -huh. and a lot of source stuff. Or maybe the stuff that they're making just plays so seamlessly. It's possible. With the MGP that it's not burying or obfuscating any, any of the MGP uh, notes. Still early. <laughs> it is also very, uh, I'm, I'm looking for anything that wouldn't be MGP and I can't find it. Like maybe a you know slight what? oak note that's way, way back there. It's low proof. Do we have a 45% MGP somewhere? Oh man. I haven't finished the MGP shelf yet. You gotta have an MGP, MGP reference shelf. I, I know, that's what I'm talking about. This is uh, the MGP mash bills, I think. It's hard to talk right now. I just woke up. Yeah. Yeah. Hand selected menu. Bottle number. Yeah, this is. Should I get coffee or whiskey? Hot, wait. Here's one that. No, that's that was the off one. It's all MGP, but it's not. Yeah, I don't know. We don't have any that are that I know of that we are. We don't have weeks. any MGP. No, because it can't be just any MGP. It, most MGP sourced is the rye one. The one that they're referring and using is the high wheat MGP. Ah, maybe this one. This is nine banded here in Texas. Mm-hmm. It's younger too. This is only a couple. Of, yeah, the age is. Totally different. See, that was aged in Texas, but it's still a lighter color. Yeah, but they don't really let it sit in Texas very long. Yeah. They, barrels come in, they dump them. See, this is what I'm typically thinking of with the MGP notes. Is they're nicely, they're matured enough where mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like it's still. That's thin. That's the, the nine banded is paper thin. Youthful. This one has some depth to it. Youthful. All right, I'm going to. More of the fruit notes are developing. There's that cherry red on the front. It's thin in the taste too. It's very dry and tangy. I wonder if that's their malt note. See, I'm looking for malt is what I'm looking for because mm -hmm. theirs is a high malt ratio. I, I can imagine some maltiness uh, in there. It's kind of mixed in with this little bit of a sweet tea. Yeah. Hmm. Eh, this is oh, it finishes with negligible. A, finishes with a little bit more of a vanilla creamy quality. It's okay. It's friendly. Yeah. It's not. Uh, it's not bad. Not remarkable, but it's you know it's like sure I'll. I'll, so I'll drink that on the rocks or the What would be impressive or... to me, what would be impressive to me if, is if I found out this was like a 50-50 proportion. And like, wow, you really played well with the... Yeah. But I, right now, I'm just assuming, maybe inaccurately, but I'm assuming that this is mostly MGP. Hmm. Yeah, it's simple, a little bit tangy at the end, a little bit dry at the end. The finish doesn't really linger. Yeah, it wants ah. to be, it wants to have an orange peel note Near the front end? It doesn't quite get there. Doesn't quite get there. And then a slight, slight tan inequality yeah, in the finish. Uh, yeah. Not bad. Belfry. After all the Tribe episodes with tasting different liquors, I'm noticing now a lot of comparisons to other alcohols that they're doing now. Yeah. Cool. 
We um we've started drinking a lot of different things. We did it, and yeah, we have actually. Start. I've noticed. Yeah. If you go back, we've we've started doing like well mezcal and maybe a little bit of brandy or more rum or yeah. yeah. And then gin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think strangely, a lot of that is because so much of our life involves whiskey that when we're at a restaurant or out or somewhere. I mean, anything that I would really look forward to up there is gonna cost me like $30 a pour. Right. Everything else is like, eh. So then I'm like, well, let's see what tequilas you got. Well, and part of the fun thing about trying stuff is if it's new. Right. Because with whiskey, it's very, very rare that mm -hmm. I you know, try something. It's like, that was unexpected. But the majority of the time, people are playing towards what they think is going to be a really popular yeah. flavor profile for obvious reasons. Um, but with something like gin and rum and Who knows? cognac, it could be like, anything. Yeah, they're reporting these things, and I have a very rudimentary yeah, me too. understanding of these categories. Uh, but when somebody that is, has much more familiarity with it, mm -hmm. they pour kind of their favorite uh, outliers and classic examples, and they, yeah, it's cool. There's a new really kick ass mezcal bar in Waco. You mentioned where they this, have, yeah. uh, they even have like, Farm distillation single mezcal or yeah. type, and a comparison of like here's three different ways of making mezcal in a mm -hmm. tasting flight. Yeah, this one was on cop on pots of clay. Yeah, clay pot stilled. This one was stainless steel. This one was copper. Yeah, and they're all small batch, and that's really interesting. Yeah, but again, when it comes to just the spectrum of possible flavors, mm -hmm. it's whiskey. Mm -hmm. Timmy Stoffer, Stoffer. That's the sum L4 thing yeah, is then. This is the uh, level four mm -hmm. sum additions. Level nine. We added this. Smacks you in the balls, says you. Whatever that is. Oh, what is Actually, it? Actually, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It, was, it was more just like, that's cool. <laughs> what? No, no, no. There were reasons for it, but like, but then it's, uh, uh, for me, a lot of these things, like I know why I picked the star because yeah. Lone Star State and things like that, right? Um, and I know I like I picked this one because it's sort of a gem, a facet, mm -hmm. like a top of a diamond. Yeah, you know, so a rare stone. And this one is actually a from a company that makes rosary. Thanks. Oh, like uh, the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. yeah. Which I thought is, you know, yeah, apropos. interesting. Okay, um, didn't embarrass themselves, didn't blow me away. I have a sneaking suspicion this is mostly MGP, which has been known to make really nice stuff. Yeah. Here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. Steal, may you steal your liver's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink with us. <laughs> <laughs>